Hello everybody, I want to show you a program that I made a few years ago. It's a 3D maze. It's a real 3D maze. Not like that old Windows screensaver that was a 2D maze. It was displayed in 3D. It wasn't really a 3D maze. I'm going to show you the difference. Um, first I'm going to show you where you can download my maze. It's called the Cube Maze. You go to, uh, I'm going to give you the link at the bottom. Um, it's boomygoldson.wixsite.com slash home slash blender and you go there and you scroll down a little bit and you'll see where to download it. You can either download the self extractor itself, that's just going to be a zip file that you just you open it up and it automatically uh, extracts a folder with everything you need in it or you could get the blender file which is in case you want if you have blender and you want to change around stuff in the game make it more exciting. Um, anyway, so this is what happens when you get the game. You open up the folder and you open up, it's called 3D Maze Six Directions. And you see over here it says rows, columns, and depths. Uh, I think it was a little bit technical when I named this, but a normal maze program, what they call a 3D maze program that you would see, has one row. It's only, that's what it's called a row. And it has columns and depths. So <clears throat> you'd have, let's say, a regular, say a small maze, it would be four columns, four by four. One row, and it's only one floor high. So let's see what that would look like. It would be like this. I'll generate this maze. Okay, and controls are pretty simple. It's just move around with the mouse. You press W A S D to move around. And you just gotta go and find the spinning coin, which is somewhere here. There it is. And you get it. And no fanfare. That's the end. Okay, now we're gonna do two rows. Okay, and let's see what this looks like. Oh, we're completely stuck. Now we're gonna go. And you look up and you see this ready to go. You press spacebar, it jetpacks. I don't hear anything. Probably because, okay, whatever. You probably hear it when you play it. Anyways, run to the end over here. I'm gonna find the coin. Oh, And go up and get it. Doop. Very simple. Three rows. It's a little more complicated now. It's always going to be in the opposite, far opposite upper corner from where you started. That's where the point always is. Okay. And two, four, four by four. This gets a little trickier. Oof, and you got it. Anyways, you can change the numbers around as much as you want. Um, you can do one fun thing would be to do, let's say you can do two rows by two columns and like, I don't know, 20. This is just a long, it's just two by two and it's just a long, 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 long thing. So let's see how that looks. It's really easy, this one. There's only so much you can do. Gonna keep going forward. <clears throat> um, each time you make a maze, by the way, it, it generates a new maze. So even if you do the same configuration, if you do this, let's say you like 4x4x4, four by four by four, um, and you do that um, over and over again, each time it will be something different. So um, that's fun. Anyways, so um, get in here. I'm going to show you also one more thing, in case you ever um, if you need help navigating, if there's the, there's the point, if you ever need help navigating, if you press the H key, it drops a hat, and you can use that to like mark off something, let's say you, you already explored one area, you know it's not, the exit's not over there, so you drop the hat next to that doorway and you say, I know I already did this, and you can look around, and then you can come back later, if you get to the same spot, you say, oh, here's the hat, that means I already 
did this area and then you can, whatever, whatever you want to do it you can also say like to explore this area you can drop the hat pick it up again you stand next to the hat and you press h and it picks up the hat <clears throat> same like that anyway i'm just going to go right here i'm going to fly outside um past the coin and go outside so you can see what this looks like there we go look at that long two by two by 20. and i'll show you another couple of fun configurations you can do um, one column by let's say eight depth and eight rows. So this is a regular maze, a regular 2D maze, but it's lopsided in case you find that fun. So there we go. It's just a regular maze, but it's now uh, just that much more annoying. challenging to do three rows that's two floors in other words by eight by eight this is actually quite challenging and we're gonna just try that and that's gonna be it um let's see where I am to get my bearings okay and looking around looking around I think usually when I do this this type of maze when it has three floors and eight by eight, I end up like just going over and over again in the same areas because I just can't remember where everything is. But eventually, I learn like where things are, where things aren't, and then I, where I go. Did I go am I already? I did that. I did that. Do you see if I did that already? Uh, no. I did this. And it doesn't always necessarily, you know, not necessarily is going in the direction that you're supposed to go gonna get you to the end because sometimes you gotta go backwards counterintuitive but that's the way mazes work especially 3d maze because a 2d maze you, 2d maze you can at least like close off you can say i know it's not anywhere in this in this direction because i already like saw everything over here but 3d maze is it's going around itself and upside down it's the way to get there's always gonna be there's always only one way to get there also in this maze the way i made it <clears throat> now i'm getting totally lost where i am i don't know where i am i have to do everything all over again Get the idea. Okay, hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching.